Uh, hello, everybody. Welcome to webinar of the National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance in Ukraine. Uh, and we we have webinar on cross-border quality assurance in the field of veterinary medicine. My name is Natalia Stukal. I'm a vice head at the National Agency for Higher Education Quality Assurance. And uh, uh, today I will moderate this webinar. So please uh, show us the agenda for, for this webinar. We have agenda, so please... Um, Demonstrated the agenda uh, includes some uh, uh, presentations. So first of all, we would like to welcome our key speaker of the webinar, uh, who is the director of uh, uh, European Association of Establishments for Veterinary Education, Professor Pierre Le Lekeus. Um, so uh, the. Uh, Pierre will present uh, the uh, key points related to uh, accreditations uh, provided by uh, by a European Association of Establishments for Veterinary Education. Then we will uh, give the floor to our colleagues from Bila Tserkva National Agrarian University, uh, who will present the case study how they uh, were accredited, how they passed through the uh, cross-border accreditation, and uh, um, they will share ex the experience uh, uh, and uh, will share advices and tips how to to uh, be successful in cross-border quality assurance. And also, then we will have Q and A session. And please be also aware that you are able to uh, type your qu questions in, in Q and A ch chat for this webinar. So let's start. I just uh, tell you a few words about the National Agency for Higher Education Quality in Ukraine. Uh, so uh, next slide, please. We, uh, of course, we will not provide you in-depth information because the audience of this webinar uh, is mainly uh, representatives from uh, Ukrainian higher educational institutions uh, who already uh, applied for NACA uh, for NACA <clears throat> accreditations, and uh, you are aware of our activities. Just a few words that we are uh, the only Ukrainian uh, quality assurance agency, and uh, um, we are uh, responsible for uh, education quality assurance system and also for academic integrity issues. And uh, just to, to give the general data, on our activities, so in, in our network, we have more than 5,000 people. And uh, of course, we, we cover all uh, study fields. However, uh, veterinary medicine is very specific field, and we would like to uh, conduct this first webinar for those uh, high educational institutions who have study programs in uh, veterinary medicine. Uh, by the way, we in our system, we have uh, 37 uh, uh, experts, accreditation experts who uh, have, uh, who are experts in veterinary medicine field. Next slide, please. Also general data. Uh, of course, NACA has a lot of accreditations and we have more than uh, 3,000 uh, accreditations um, per year. However, uh, uh, we have uh, also accreditations in uh, among them, among these uh, 3,000 accreditations per year, we have uh, some uh, veterinary medicine uh, medicine uh, study programs accredited, and you can see that some general data on on the slide. Uh, uh, of course, uh, veterinary medicine, as I mentioned previously, is very specific field uh, uh, and uh, a narrow and specific field, but we would like to pay attention to this field uh, and uh, uh, support our colleagues from uh, from Ukraine and higher educational institutions uh, in order to provide them with opportunities and advices and uh, information uh, on um, on uh, uh, how to to make also uh, how to apply for cross border accreditation of of your study programs. Uh, you can see here that we uh, accredited, for instance, in two thousand twenty three nine 
uh, veterinary study programs uh, in all the, uh, in uh, all uh, cycles of uh, high education. I mean, bachelor, master, and um, PhD, and also. Uh, we, uh, uh, you can see that we, at, at the moment, because of the uh, martial law, we have two types of accreditations. One is full accreditation, and another one is technical accreditation uh, for just for one year because of the uh, war in Ukraine. So uh, we, uh, you, you can see also numbers on on this slide. So uh, uh, I think uh, that we can start with. Um, uh, with our agenda, could you please again show us agenda because we have a uh, schedule uh, of, of the uh, agenda, please. Uh, so we we have uh, half of an hour presentation uh, and I uh, it is my honor and pleasure to give the floor to Pierre, who is director uh, for European Association of Establishments for Veterinary Education. Uh, Pierre, the floor is yours. Welcome, welcome to NACA webinar. Thank you. I will try to, to share the, the screen. Do you see my screen? Yeah. Okay. So welcome uh, everybody. It's my pleasure to present you uh, Eve, uh, the Association of uh, uh, so uh, an which is the European system of evaluation of veterinary training, which is organized by Eve the European Association of Establishment for Veterinary Education, together with FVE, which is the Federation of Veterinarians of Europe. So this accreditation process is organized in full agreement with what we call the SOP, which is the Standard Operating Procedure which is reviewed quite every four years. And the last one have been reviewed in 2023 and have been fully approved by the General Assembly of EVE and of FVE. And all these procedures are in agreement with the rule from ENQA, which is the European Association for Quality Assurance in Higher Education. So EVE is already a quite old organization and we are busy to organize visitation since more than 30 years. Uh, the first European directive was published in 78 and now we are working under two European directive, the 2005 one, and the 2013 uh, one. And everything is going done in agreement with ENQA since our organization have been fully accredited by ENQA. So many veterinary education establishment, we call it VEE, -E, uh, are uh, accredited or in the process to be accredited by EasyVet. All of the establishment in the European Union uh, are member of EVE and many other uh, in uh, Europe or outside of Europe. So it's around 100 V in Europe and 15 V outside of Europe which are member of EVE. In Europe, the countries are regrouped in eight regions, eh, uh, depending uh, of the ma mainly of the geographical situation. And for instance, Ukraine currently is uh, located uh, in a region seven, together with several other countries. There are 
also non-European uh, VEEs, which are member of, uh, of EVE. Uh, they are in Asia, in uh, Middle East, in North Africa, and in South America. So in the past, five V from Russia and one V from Belarus were member, but they have been temporarily excluded uh, by the EVE uh, General Assembly. So the key question for you eh, is why to be accredited by EVE Izivet in addition to the Ukrainian Acc accreditation by your agency. Mm -hmm. There are several reasons. Eh? And in fact, uh, by law, it's not compulsory for your VEE to be accredited by EVE, even if you become later a member of the European Union. However, although it's not compulsory, all VEs in the European Union are member of EVE. In some countries, it is imposed by law eh, to be accredited if you want to be allowed to accept new students in your establishment. The second reason is the international reputation of the VEE. As you know, the result of the accreditation or not accreditation are public. Yeah, the, our organization is working in full transparency. And so it's very important for international relationship uh, to be accredited by our organization if you want to have such a credibility at the international uh, level. Another reason concerns the veterinary specialization, which in Europe is organized by EBVS. And you know, to become a specialist, you need to follow a specific residency program, which is uh, approved by EBVS, yeah, which finally gives the title or not of specialist. In Europe, you, you know it, we call it diplomate, for instance, in veterinary surgery, ophthalmology, etc. To enter in a residency program, a graduate vet must be graduate from an accredited establishment by Eve Isivet. Another uh, important point is that in some countries to register as veterinarian, eh, like in the United Kingdom, in England, for instance, you must be graduated uh, uh, from an accredited establishment by Isivet. If you want to do an internship, a residency program to work in a practice or in a slaughterhouse, eh, you must register at the RCVS. And to register at the RCVS, it's uh, necessary that your the VEEs where you graduate is accredited by EasyVet. It may help, of course, for international funding and it may help uh, to sharing experience and tools between members of EVE. Every year we have a general assembly and an education days. So all representatives from all members uh, meet in one place. This year it will be in late May in Paris, in Maison Alfort, the vet school of Maison Alfort. And we will discuss about uh, e-learning, uh, the e-logbook, eh, the portfolio, interactive video, uh, virtual slaughterhouse, patient recording systems, and many different tools, eh, which are now developed based on mainly on artificial uh, intelligence and digital tools. Uh, and uh, many of these systems may be shared between uh, VEEs uh, from different countries. So the principle of EasyVet is simple, but it focuses on undergraduate veterinary education. So we do not investigate the PhD or the postgraduate uh, studies uh, at this uh, level. Mm -hmm. It's managed, as you know, by Eve, eh, with the help of FVE. 
but the final decision of accreditation is done by an independent body, eh, the European Committee of Veterinary Education. We call it ECOV. Hmm? But everything is done in agreement with the standard operating procedure. So, of course, the main things is to for an uh, establishment who want to be member of EVE and accredited is to be compliant, to be in agreement with 55 standards. And this standard will check eh, if the VE is well managed, have appropriate financing, appropriate staff, facilities, equipment, uh, patients. Eh? Uh, it must provide uh, up-to-date eh, veterinary education in a, in a good uh, learning environment eh, with uh, fair assessment systems and all of these activities. Uh, must be in agreement with quality assurance. Uh, you are probably familiar with the quality assurance loop, uh, and this loop must be completed in all uh, area, uh, which means to develop something, then to check if it's okay, and then to try to improve it, to close the loop of permanent improvement. So the 55 standards are regrouped in 10 area. The first area is objective organization and quality assurance policy. Area two is finance. Area three, the biggest and the most important one is the curriculum. Area four is facilities and equipment. Area five is animal resources and teaching material of animal origin. Area six is learning resources, library, etc. Area seven is student admission, progression, and welfare. Area eight is student assessment. Area nine is academic staff and super staff, which is technical staff. And area 10 is research programs, continuing training, and postgraduate education. Of course, today we have no time to go in depth eh, for all uh, 55 standards. Eh? Uh, just I give you one example in area one. Eh, the VEE must have a strategic plan for let's say the next three, four, five years, eh, which explain where, when, and how. Where to go, when, uh, which is my stall, and what are the different steps to achieve this objective, and how, eh, what will be uh, the tools used uh, and the financial support to achieve this strategic plan. So this is just one example of a standard of area one. Area two is finance. And the, the finance must be sufficient to implement the strategic plan and must be quite secure for the, the future. Area three, the most important one is curriculum. And it's usually subdivided into several sections. First is the general curriculum uh, during the whole processes. And then it's subdivided in basic sciences, clinical sciences for companion animal, which include horses, equine, then clinical sciences in food production animals, mainly uh, ruminant, uh, pigs, uh, poultry, then it's uh, veterinary public health, which include uh, food safety and quality. And then there are professional knowledge uh, is uh, how to train the future veterinarian to work in a clinic, in a veterinary clinic or in a professional environment. Area five concerns the facilities and equipment uh, which need to be appropriate uh, for the training of all students. 
Uh, the amphitheater need to be large enough, the laboratories for practical training, uh, the clinical facilities need to be appropriate for training in all discipline and in all major species. Area five concerns the animal resources and teaching material of animal origin. For instance, there must be a sufficient number of patients eh, in order to train all uh, students. Eh, as told before, it, it's all in all discipline, eh, medicine, surgery, reproduction, etc., and all major species, companion animal, food producing uh, animals. And it concerns also teaching material of animal origin for necropsy and for uh, food safety and quality. Then we have learning resources. In the past, it was mainly devoted to library, availability of books uh, for students. But you know, today there are more and more electronic resources. Uh, and it's important that all students have access to uh, these resources, uh, both in the university and when they are home. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to that, there are no more and more development of what we call skill labs eh, to develop the skills eh, in, in the concept of never the first time in a live animal. So there are mummies and eh, there are mannequins uh, which are provided in a room to help students to first train themselves to do suture, to do uh, intravenous injection in mannequins before to do it in real patients in live uh, animals. Student admission, progression, and welfare. Uh, so there must be very clear and publish it information about how to admit students, how to follow their progression, and how to ensure their welfare during the whole process. Uh, for instance, when they, are, uh, they have a problem, there must be uh, an office in the VEE where they can go uh, to help from some advice or from some psychological support, etc. Area 8 is the student assessment to check if they have acquired uh, the sufficient knowledge and skill. Eh? Usually uh, different methods eh, uh, of evaluation uh, are, uh, must be proposed. It's a theoretical uh, exam, multiple choice, uh, written exam, oral exam, clinical exam, we call it OSCE also, and practical exam, what is important is that the V must propose a global strategy to be sure that all students are available in a fair way and in a complete way in order to, to be sure that they have acquired the day of graduation all the knowledge and skill requested by the SOP. Area 9 concerns the academic staff, eh, the teaching staff, and the support staff, which is uh, technician, uh, nurses, uh, administrative person. And for instance, one requirement is a formal training to teach and to assess to be provided to all academic staff, to all persons involved with the teaching eh, in the uh, VEE. Of course, the, the VE must have the teacher in all relevant discipline and for all major species with the appropriate experience. Mm -hmm. Finally, Area 10 concern research program continuing training and uh, postgraduate education. Uh, it's, uh, we do not evaluate in depth the research done by the VE, but we evaluate if the VE provide a research-based education and provide the opportunity to organize postgraduate research studies and to uh, allow students to participate 
to research programs. So to help the V eh, to be sure that uh, it is in agreement with the uh, other uh, establishment in Europe, we have developed what we call EasyVet indicators. So this is an Excel table, which is available on the website. I will show you. And the VE, before to be accredited, must uh, complete this table. Uh, for instance, the number of full-time equivalent teaching staff involved in veterinary training during the last three academic years. And this is an example of uh, an establishment which will apply uh, for uh, re-accreditation. Uh, the number of undergraduate students, et cetera. A number of companion uh, patients seen, uh, et cetera. So there are many, uh, there are different information requests. And then automatically, the Excel table will calculate the 19 indicators here. Hmm? And you will have here the average of the last three academic value. Here you have the median of all accredited VEE in Europe, and here you have the minimal value. And finally, you have the balance eh, between the, your value and the minimal value, and the balance should be positive. So you see here is a slight problem with three indicator, and this will be discussed in depth eh, when the expert will arrive uh, on site. What is important also to know is that we are working under two European directive, eh, which is the 2005 and 2013. And this directive describes two things. We call it the input and the output. The input is the list of subjects to be taught to all students. For instance, anatomy, physiology, uh, bacteriology, etc. Uh, it's a long list of subjects to be taught. Then it's what we call the output, which is the list of competencies to be acquired at the end of the uh, training. So they are, in fact, you will find on the website, there are 38 day one competencies. And this is very important, and the visitation will focus on this to be sure that all students graduated by a VEE has, have acquired these competencies the day of graduation. Of course, it's not competencies for being a perfect vet after five years of experience. It's what a freshly graduate uh, student must know uh, the and to enter the veterinary uh, profession. And they are listed uh, and they concern all aspects of uh, theoretical knowledge, of skill, things to be done, and on behavior. Uh, for instance, the graduate student must be uh, able to work uh, in, uh, in a team, uh, in an environment, and must be able to communicate with client, uh, et cetera. So I invite you uh, to read uh, all these day one competencies available on our website. So what about the evaluation process? If you are not member of E, the first step is to ask us for a preliminary visitation. And in fact, the first step is done by a webinar uh, where we will uh, explain you uh, the whole process and especially we will reply to your question. Then there will be a preliminary visitation, uh, which is done just once and it's short. And then after two or three years, it's followed by a full visitation. And this is four days. And this has to be done every seven years. And in case of some problems of uh, non-compliance with one of the 55 standards, a revisitation may be organized usually one year after the full visitation 
to check uh, if all uh, problems have been solved by the VE. And between two full visitation, uh, which are seven years, every two years, the VE is invited to propose a very short interim report, it's maximum two pages, to inform about potential changes, for instance, change in the number of students, in the number of staff, in the caseload, in the number of patients, uh, et cetera. So the preliminary visitation will uh, start with the writing of what we call a self-evaluation report. There is a template in the website uh, to explain you how to write this self-evaluation uh, report. The, the report, uh, which is around 100 pages and cover the 10 area listed before, must be sent to the two visitors, uh, it's one expert and one coordinator, two months before the start of the preliminary visitation, which lasts two days. And there will be a report which is sent to ECOVE, uh, which is the decision-making body. And if the report is endorsed by ECOVE, then the VEE may ask to the General Assembly to become uh, official a candidate member uh, to uh, EVE. And then uh, the process continue with a full visitation, uh, which is usually done uh, one, two, three years after the preliminary visitation, depending on the number of potential problems identified during the preliminary visitation. And this is done with a full team of eight persons. Uh, so there is five experts uh, in all different uh, group of discipline, one practitioner, a veterinarian, one veterinary student, and one uh, coordinator. As explained before, the final decision is done by ECOVE, which usually accepts the report done by the expert, but has the power to amend it. Uh, uh, and the final decision and the final visitation report is public and will be published by the EVE in the EVE website, but also in the VEE uh, website after the ECOV uh, decision. So ECOV, uh, for your information, there are four members uh, nominated by EVE, so three members plus the president, three member nominated by the FVE, and then the president and uh, director of EVE and FVE are present, but without voting right. So just to summarize things, uh, here are the different steps eh, to become an EVE member. Eh, the first step eh, is to submit an official request for a preliminary visitation through the EVE office. Mm -hmm. And then together with the EVE office, the date are agreed and an official evaluation agreement is signed. Then the preliminary visitation is completed in agreement with the SOP. And after uh, this uh, visitation and the endorsement by ECOV, the VE submit an official membership request to the EVE uh, office. And after uh, paying uh, the, the membership fee, uh, the establishment can ask for a full visitation uh, on the right moment when the VEE believe uh, they are ready uh, for this uh, full uh, visitation. So I would strongly suggest you uh, to visit uh, the EVE uh, website uh, where all invitation uh, is uh, available. So I hope you see here the home page of uh, the EVE. Mm -hmm. And I suggest you uh, to go to EasyVet, you see here. And for instance, you have here the standard operating procedure. Standard operating procedure 2023. This is the valid one. Uh, so you click here uh, and you open the document and you will, you will have all the relevant information here. Uh, first, you have the European directive 
eh, on chapter one. Eh, on chapter two, you have a description in details of full uh, visitation, revisitation, preliminary visitation, interim report. Then on chapter three, eh, you have the list of the 55 standards eh, regrouped in the different, in the 10 area. Mm -hmm. And then you have a list eh, of uh, annexes, which are very important. Eh? For instance, the first one is the EU directive. Mm -hmm. Then the second one is the list of uh, subject and day one competencies. Eh? Remember about the 38 day one competencies and the list of sub subject to be taught and the competencies to be acquired at the end of the training. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are also the easy vet indicator, how to fill it eh, in the uh, from the data, eh, the raw data from your VEE. Here are the fees eh, for uh, the easy vet. Eh, for instance, eh, you will see that for a preliminary visitation, it will cost five thousand uh, euro. Eh, plus the uh, travel and accommodation cost of the visitors. Eh? And then every year, eh, you will have to pay 4,200 euro, eh, which will include eh, all the visitation process, the membership fees, and uh, many different things. So all these uh, data eh, are uh, available eh, in uh, in the... Uh, in the uh, SOP, uh, then you have other uh, information like what is very important for you is a template and guideline for the writing of the SER. Uh, it's important to read it. Uh, then it's a timetable uh, for a full visitation uh, during the full four days. Uh, you know how you, you could need to organize it. Uh, uh, then this is more for the expert. Uh, uh, then uh, interim, it's a template here for writing the interim report. Uh, and uh, then there are other uh, information uh, uh, available uh, for uh, the, the guests. So this is uh, important for you. Uh, and... Uh, I also suggest you uh, to look here uh, to uh, the uh, document to be downloaded. Uh, there are many different things. For instance, I spoke to you about the indicators. Uh, it could be interesting for you uh, to, uh, to click here uh, and to uh, download uh, this uh, Excel table and to try to fill in it. So you will immediately see where you are for this indicator when compared to the average uh, of the uh, different uh, uh, VEE in Europe. Okay, so that's uh, quite all uh, for uh, my uh, presentation. Uh, and so I will be ready to reply to uh, additional uh, questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Professor uh, Lekeos. Uh, so this is very important for Ukrainian universities to, to understand the approach. Uh, by the way, uh, so when when uh, we send invitations to all the participants, we send the links to to, to the documents and to, to to the standards you have just demonstrated. So uh, the the uh, participants of the webinar, please use the materials please review the link suggested by um by our key speaker and uh, actually uh, from the NACA point of view we would like to highlight that this is very important uh, in terms of European integration in this uh, specific field uh, and uh, in, in terms of uh, how Ukraine can be 
prepared for for uh, being a, a part of the European Union uh, and full member of the European Union in this particular field. Uh, and uh, um, actually, when we refer to uh, European standards and guidelines, uh, ESG 2015, and also to acquire uh, recommendations on cross-border accreditation, so we, we can uh, see that uh, uh, it is important to uh, uh, get accreditations from uh, those agencies which which are uh, specific for the field and which provide you with the uh, right approach in your specific field. So uh, NAFA reports the case, uh, the, the only case actually in Ukraine which we have uh, with the Bila Tsarkva uh, National Agrarian University uh we we reported to to the ministry to 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 the parliament and to 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 the, to the society as a positive case best practice uh that uh, university and particular uh study program in veterinary medicine uh has found the right agency and uh, has uh, applied for this um cross border accreditation and uh, that's why today we have invited to, for, to this webinar uh, colleagues from uh, Bila Tsarkva National Agrarian University so they could share their experience, how they um, applied, how they uh, get prepared and how they uh, uh, go through the uh, cross-border accreditation. Uh, so let me uh, pass the floor to uh, our colleagues, uh, Oksana Hitska and uh, Taras Tsarenko, uh, to present their case and to, to share their experience. And after after the presentation of our colleagues from Bila Tsarkva, we will have Q&A session and uh, uh, we, we all will be ready to, to answer your questions. So colleagues, uh, please, the floor is yours. You're welcome to uh, unmute your microphones and speak, please. Uh, let's start. Uh, dear colleagues, uh, today we represent the staff and management of our university and faculty uh, who together and individually have made efforts to develop our faculty. We thank the organizer of this webinar for the opportunity to speak at such a timely and important event and present the experience of our faculty in the inter internalization of veterinary education. We are also pleased to meet again with Professor Pierre Lecu, who has already provided a lot of useful information on his, in his speech. So let's us introduce our faculty and share the experience gained on the way to EIV ECFT accreditation. Next slide, please. Our university has several areas of study, veterinary medicine, our biotechnology, biotechnology, environmental, uh, no, no, uh, uh, 10. Thank you. Uh, economic, social, and humanitarian. Uh, the study programs at the faculties are successfully accredited by the National uh, Quality Assurance Agency, but only the Faculty of Veterinary Medicine has European accreditation. Veterinarians are trained at the faculty at the master's degree level, 360 credits, with a six-year full-time training period. Currently, our faculty is a full member of European Association of Establishments for Veterinary Education since 2021. 
Information about the members of the organization and their accreditation status is available on the official website of, the, of this association. Uh, next, please. Our faculty has a total of 757 students now. Among them, 477 are the students funded by the state and 280 students studying on a contract basis. Students from all regions of Ukraine study at our faculty. Most of them are from northern and central regions. Next. Our faculty consists of nine departments. The faculty has three research laboratory institutes, educational and scientific laboratories, scientific library department. Uh, the faculty also has a close cooperation with the Institute of Post Diploma Training. We have a regulated speciality and practical training of students is mandatory component. Taking into account the requirements of national standards and European accreditation, we have significantly improved the practical component. The veterinary training hospital is an important part of our faculty. Practical training is also carried out at the university's training and production center. Next, please. Practical and clinical training of students is a mandatory element of the veterinary curriculum on our faculty. The possibility of this training uh, should be provided by the relevant faculty departments and external facilities involved in this process by agreement. Clinical training uh, should cover all animal species. In the veterinary training hospital, students uh, are involved in uh, treating uh, real diseases animals uh, and uh, training clinic works as a uh, commercial units. Students practice under the supervision of academic staff and uh, residence veterinarians. The equine clinic uh, works uh, in a new building uh, that was built Speciality for this reason, the ruminants, wine, and other clinic is located uh, on the campus of the faculty. And additionally, clinic training is uh, conducted uh, at the university teaching farm. Mm, and uh, this is very useful. The clinic of exotic animal um, also uses the city zoo facilities by agreement. Practical training is supported uh, by local institution of the state veterinary service too. Please, next slide. Uh, the faculty has been developing its international activities since the 90s, uh, a powerful driver for the modernization of the curriculum and teaching methods uh, was uh, cooperation with Vet Agressu, Leon France, uh, which developed uh, uh, into an OIE twinning project to modernize veterinary education in Ukraine in uh, 2015. Please, next. Uh, during the, this project, we improved the curriculum in line with the recommendation of World Organization for Animal Health. We studied the best practice uh, for training students in uh, vet agressive. Many of uh, faculty, uh, faculty teaching staff completed internships and mentoring in uh, Lyon. Please, next slide. In 2017, the project was completed. Uh, the faculty held a final conference with the uh, participation of many professors from the Ukrainian Faculty of Veterinary Medicine. We share our experience uh, of this project. Our faculty actively participate in next activities to develop recommendation for involving veterinary education uh, in Ukraine in uh, European and international uh, educational area. Please, next. So after uh, this activity, the university management decided to achieve the European accreditation. 
our expectation were to continue to improve the professionalism of teachers, improve the study program, achieve an appropriate level of quality of students' uh, education, and integrate into the European educational space. Uh, the SEFT uh, evaluation ensures that the study program meets strict standard of the uh, and promote uh, continuous improvement of the faculty. It was important uh, that the accreditation requirements of SEFT reflect the specific of the veterinary study program. Recognition of European accreditation at the national level also supported this decision of management of the university. Please, uh, next. In 2019, uh, an essential stage in the preparation for accreditation was a consultative visitation by experts and their recommendation for eliminating gaps. We also actively studied the experience of our colleague from Lyon, France, and from Kosice, Slovakia, and uh, requested consultation from other external experts. Our staff uh, has internship in the Erasmus K1 uh, program and uh, study the experience of our colleague from other European faculty. At the end of 2020 was a full visitation of the team of eight experts who during the week evaluated the study program according to all criteria of the uh, SOP. This required significant organization efforts and uh, efficient work of the team um, of experts and uh, the faculty team too. Currently, the faculty is uh, preparing for the next accreditation in the same responsible way. Please, next. The standard operating procedure uh, SOP is the main guide uh, that provides uh, detailed information for getting uh, ready to accreditation. The SOP should be easily understood to every one of the faculty, every one of the teaching staff and uh, administration. We had to make sure uh, that uh, our study program meets the uh, 10 area of standard of SF accreditation. To do this, we have formed committees in specific areas for self-analysis, deep self-analysis and proposing solution. Our self-analysis and planning involved various university units, including academic departments, QA departments, financial administration and other. After the self-analysis and correction uh, or, or of all the gaps, we start writing the self-assessment report, the key document of the accreditation process for the faculty's side. The information should be brief, clear, and back it up with evidence. Each standard uh, requires attention to extra efforts from the faculty to ensure compliance, a speciality in organizing clinical tra tra training and making change to the curriculum. Significant uh, funding was needed to building and equipping a veterinary training hospital, isolation unit, necropsy, implementing the biosecurity system and buying specific equipment. Please, next slide. We want to highlight key points about the achievement SF standard and uh, share our experience. Creating a good study program in line uh, standard uh, area three curriculum is very important. Uh, a balanced program is the foundation for uh, meeting all other standard components. Pay attention to the terminology. For example, different uh, learning activities of students, uh, core clinical training, CCT, and elective practical training, KPT, and other terminology. In our practice, traditional practice of our faculty, uh, present all these activities, but the name it may be different. It's uh, important to uh, understand. Promoting English uh, learning for teaching staff is important uh, too for better understanding uh, of information. Everyone, everyone 
uh, at their level uh, should understand their role in the program, seek connection, and be motivated to achieve the standard goals. Remember, the goal is to provide better training for students. It is a central idea. After the full visit, uh, the experts create the report in which they assess compliance with the standard and provide valuable recommendations to future program improvement. This feedback is very, very valuable for continuous development of uh, study program and faculty. Please, Oksana, next. Next uh, slide, please. On this slide, uh, you can see the logical structure and the interconnection of the components of our study program and curriculum. Uh, students have the opportunity to obtain adequate and in-depth competencies in all mandatory key areas. Uh, public health, uh, food safety and clinical training by animal species. Please, next. Our curriculum is harmonized with standard operative procedure uh, EIV. The curriculum uh, for the training of veterinary specialists in our university covers uh, a complex of compulsory disciplines, which include basic discipline, specialty veterinary disciplines, which are divided into basic, clinical, animal, production and block of subject, uh, which include food safety and quality, veterinary public health, and one health concept. Next, please. Uh, currently, the faculty participate in EIV general assemblies, educational day events, survey, consultation, and is in contact with other faculties in the our seven regions. Next, please. In addition to uh, a constant uh, in incentive to improve the possibility of using EIV standards as effective tools for improving the quality of veterinary education, the benefits of EIV membership uh, include uh, expanding international opportunities for students and teachers. They join in the IFSA activities and are currently involving uh, another uh, students from other faculties in IFSA Ukraine. In 2023 and 2024, students of our faculty participate in the International Student Animal Evaluation Competition in Paris. MSD Animal Health and the European Veterinary Federation uh, have awarded a grant in 2024 for 68 veterinary students from the European region, which study veterinary medicine at a veterinary institution that is a member of the European Association of Veterinary Education. Uh, and uh, our fifth year student, Anne Glushenko, also won this grant this year. Next slide. Uh, our faculty has close connection and cooperation uh, with various European institutions. You can see on this slide. This allows for the exchange of experience, internship, and training for our teachers and students. Next, please. And in conclusion, we would like to say the next. We are grateful for the moral support and assistance from EIV since the beginning of the war in Ukraine. We are grateful for our, to our colleagues for their personal assistance. Some of our teachers uh, participated in the training protection program at Vet Agrosuplion. Some students were accepted to the facility of EIV members. We constantly feel the support of the European educational and veterinary community. Thank you for your attention.
Uh, thank you, dear colleagues. So uh, now our uh, webinar participants have the information from uh, Professor Lequeu, from our colleagues from Bila Tserkva. So uh, I think this information was very useful, but when we um, asked you for a registration, we also asked you some questions. So you, you, you had the opportunity to ask questions during the registration and also in our Q&A uh session so uh we would like to address some of them because uh, our key speakers had the opportunity to uh respond to them during their presentation but also we now we have uh up to 20 minutes to discuss your questions and respond to them and uh, let me take first a uh, couple of questions because they were like general not not uh, uh, subject specific but general question First of all, um, uh, it was a question about the uh, what are the benefits and requirements of European accreditation of the faculty. Uh, let me clarify here a little bit, uh, because in Ukraine, according to Ukrainian legislation, we don't have uh, accreditations of faculty. Uh, currently, we have just accreditation of study programs, and this is very important and very key that uh, we have accreditation of study programs. So uh, Ukrainian universities can apply either for NACA or for European registered agencies, uh, uh, but, but for accreditation of study programs, not, not for faculty. Of course, uh, if uh, European uh, agencies uh, provide you with accreditation of faculty, it means that you are doing it just for prestigious, but not for formal uh, formal things, uh, because in order to issue diplomas for your students, you are expected to have study programs accreditation. This is a requirement of legislation of Ukraine. So please pay attention when you are going uh, to apply for uh, acquire registered agencies accreditation. So just accreditation of study programs. In the future, we will also uh, have institutional accreditation, but at the moment it is not launched in Ukraine. So just accreditation of study programs. Another question, it was uh, it was a question um, uh, regarding the rights of the gu uh, guarantor, as it, as it uh, written here in English, but I suppose this is about study program leader or, or garant, як ми говоримо в наших документах. So, uh, and it was a question how the, uh, uh, to, to stimulate and the rights of the study program leader and how to stimulate study program leaders. We responded as NACA, we responded to this question in our multiple thousands of webinars. Uh, and uh, I, I won't, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, spend too much time to responding to it because this is a general question. And please, uh, please uh, refer to the university autonomy and uh, university documents uh, in this regard. So this is a general question and we would like to give the floor to colleagues to respond uh, uh, veterinary medicine specific uh, questions. Uh, so uh, dear colleagues, uh, dear Professor Lequeu, dear, dear colleagues, uh, Dr. Serenko and uh, Hitska, uh, you, you get, got access to all questions uh, of our participants. Uh, would you like to answer any specific question or would you like to read me any general question from the list? Uh, have you identified any questions which you would like to respond to our participants? So I, I believe that uh, several questions uh, have been already uh, replied during the two presentations. And most questions uh, as a reply in the standard operating procedure. Uh, so it's important that... Uh, uh, all uh, colleagues uh, have an in-depth look of the standard operating procedure and then ask me uh, if there are some part that I do not understand. Uh, however, it must be uh, clear uh, that what we will focus on are standards, but never if or easy vet will impose way 
to reach the compliance to the standards. And there are many different ways to be compliant with the standard. So the expert will analyze eh, if the study program provides the minimum requirement, but to reach it, it may be done by several ways. I just give you an example. For instance, it is compulsory to have a practical training in slaughterhouse of major species, right? uh, ruminant, pigs, poultry. However, in some countries, students are not allowed to enter in some slaughterhouse, uh, for instance, some poultry slaughterhouse. Hmm? Then what is requested is what we call convincing compensation. And then the establishment must, for instance, develop a virtual slaughterhouse, which is already used in several establishments in Europe, eh, where uh, students can be shown in detail how it works in a slaughterhouse. Uh, and then, in addition to that, some seminar must be organized with veterinarian working in slaughterhouse, and some pathological pieces must be shown to the student in uh, the necropsy room. So this is an example, and eh, that there are several ways to reach uh, the, uh, the standards. Uh, yeah, colleagues, Pantaras, uh, Pani, Oksana. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. We saw a question about uh, the level of accreditation the program in Villa Cercle Agrarian University, Masters or Bachelors. We have uh, a Masters uh, degree and uh, we accreditate this level. Thank you very much. So I also from the list of uh, uh, questions which uh, our uh, participants submitted before the webinar, I noted some uh, questions from stakeholders. Uh, for instance, what, uh, for instance, how employers are involved into evaluation. So from both sides, I mean, from the agency side and from the university side. So if you would like to answer this question, so please. No, I, I'm not sure I understand the, the question. What do you mean by stakeholders? Uh, is staff or... Uh, employers, uh, employers, employers. Uh, how employers uh, are involved into accreditation? Yeah. So uh, during the visitation, eh, the team of experts will meet on Thursday lunchtime, what we call the alumni uh, the member of uh, administration of uh, the region or the country, uh, and the practitioners uh, who are potential employers of the new graduate. Uh, that's one important thing. And the expert will ask uh, if they consider that uh, the level of competencies of the graduate uh, students uh, is appropriate and then the second important thing is to involve the stakeholders in the quality assurance loop of the establishment. And you know, there are a strategic plan, for instance, the VEE must ask the opinion of the stakeholders right, about what needs to be uh, taught, what are the objectives, when to reach it, how to reach it. Mm -hmm. And then the establishment must analyze the suggestion from the stakeholders and follow this suggestion or explain why it's not possible or it is not appropriate to follow this suggestion. So this is the two important things for the stakeholders. The third one is uh, the involvement of stakeholders in the elective practical training, eh, we call it EPT, eh, mm -hmm. which are mainly devoted to uh, teach to the student the, uh, the professional knowledge, eh, to know what is the real life in veterinary medicine, eh, how to learn to communicate with the different type of clients, etc. 
So this is the, in fact, the involvement of the stakeholders in the evaluation process. Okay, thank you very much, Pierre. Uh, I also have a question to uh, colleagues from Bila Tsarkva in our uh, Q&A chat. Uh, so do you have an English speaking courses in your institution and how such information influenced your European accreditation? Uh, uh, if if I can the answer to this question, yes, uh, we uh, have the courses, internal courses in our uh, university. Is a uh, really is a important problem in the start to international uh, international cooperation, but. Uh, uh, English uh, is very important for uh, visitation, for traveling, for uh, take a part in the exchange uh, scholarship program. Uh, and this program of scholarship, uh, for example, Erasmus Plus K1, it's uh, very important to see uh, the different faculty in the European and see the best practice and uh, see the way to achieve the standards is uh, um, uh, connecting uh, with uh, colleagues, uh, consulting uh, and uh, build network. Network mm -hmm. is very important. Uh, and start uh, this uh, process uh, from uh, English uh, courses. And our management uh, rector uh, organizes uh, the internal uh, course for uh, our teaching staff and we uh, in general, um, use this course for start speaking and improve our uh, English uh, skills. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's information uh, maybe in influence of the decision of experts, but some, um, I don't know what is the level of influence, but uh, uh, fact uh, of the English speaking on staff is a very good uh, influence of the achievement of standard of uh, uh, accreditation. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. I totally agree with colleagues that it is critically important to, in order to uh, apply for European accreditation and in order to uh, integrate our, uh, you know, education and labor market into European uh into european union so it is important to speak english and this is why and again to get prepared for the accreditation uh, uh by european association it is uh, important to speak english so your staff your students your teachers speak english and this is why we also decided uh not to translate this webinar so in order everybody you know learns how to to get prepared through the uh, also uh, English speaking webinars and you know new legislation on English language in Ukraine uh, recently adopted so this is very important so uh, please pay attention at your institutions uh, in order to to be successful in cross border accreditation uh, uh, it is important to speak English and to have uh, specific courses and uh, modules in English and to have uh, English uh, language skill trainings and so on. Uh, also, one interesting question, uh, which, uh, of course, uh, Professor Lequeu in the beginning of the uh, of the presentation uh, mentioned uh, the issues why why the, this European accreditation is important for veterinary medicine, but also we have a question from the students. It seems to me, what are employment opportunities for Ukrainian students? Uh, with uh, accreditation by uh, by European uh, accredited by European agencies by European diploma. So, uh, what would what would be your answers from university point of view and from uh, uh, and from EAL, EAF, uh point of view? So, what what are employment opportunities and benefits for Ukrainian students? Yeah, so the first part of the reply will uh, explain that it will differ if the country is member or not of the European Union. When a country is member of the European Union, there is a basic law, and it, we call it the Rome Treaty, uh, which explains the free circulation of people, goods and services. 
Hmm? So somebody who is graduate eh, from an accredited uh, VEE in Europe, in, a, in the EU, in an EU country, eh, is allowed to go and to work in any EU country. That's one thing. Then uh, the, for uh, the other uh, countries, it rely on the statutory body of the country. Each country has an official statutory body who is responsible of the registration or not from veterinarian coming from outside of the EU. And this statutory body differ from one country to another one. So there are rules in a country, in a European country, which may be totally different than in another one. And the statutory body is based not on the EU law, but on the national legislation. However, it's clear that many uh, statutory bodies take into account several criteria, uh, which are, for instance, the fact to be accredited or not uh, by uh, e uh, EasyVet, the knowledge of the language, uh, etc. Uh, so the fact to be accredited uh, by EVE is undoubtedly a bonus to increase the chance of a graduate student uh, to be allowed to enter in an EU country. But it's not automatically, it's decided country by country by the specific statutory body. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, colleagues from Bilat uh, well, who would like to answer the question, wh where are your alumni work and do they have right to work? So, so do they work in, in the European Union uh, right now? Uh, yes, we have some experience uh, uh, with our students and I fully agree with Professor Lequeu. It depends on the country. It depends on the internal country system, but Ukrainian is uh, not yet the residence of the uh, European Union. Uh, and uh, we have... Uh, we are a candidate country, so we are a candidate yeah. country, so we, we, we yeah. already have status and, of candidate country, right? Yes, yeah, status of candidate, yes. Uh, but uh, we have uh, some uh, feedback from our students uh, and uh, we know this our accreditation is um, uh, make process of uh, of uh, 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 application is uh, more easily but uh, uh, our study program is already accredited uh, like uh, the same uh, standards with the european veterinary uh, education establishments but it's very deep in the uh, depend uh, country by country for example in the uh, uk uh, today is it possible to uh, uh, registration for exam of uh, royal uh, royal college of veterinary surgeries for ukrainian students uh, from bila Cerkva, like as uh, accredited uh, study program Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, uh, of course, we have a lot of questions. Uh, and of course, uh, within one webinar, uh, we cannot cover all of them. Uh, and uh, but, but we do hope that our speakers um, covered uh, the, the most of the questions you had. Uh, and uh, we uh, really try to make this webinar uh, practically oriented and helpful in order to get um, to get uh, full understanding of the procedure of cross-border accreditation. Uh, let me also take this chance to thank one more time Professor Lequeu, uh, dear Pierre, thank you very much for, for agreeing to uh, deliver this presentation to explain uh, your procedures and to answer the questions. And also many thanks to colleagues from Bila Tserkva, uh, because we, we really uh, uh, have something to share with you. So a good case study and, and uh, the experience. Uh, so thank you very much to our participants because we have uh, registered, we had registered participants more than 120, but today uh, uh, 85 participants joined. So this is 
very important and, and actually a very good number for such a narrow discipline and such narrow um, study field as veterinary medicine and considering the number of study programs is uh, in, in Ukraine is not uh, so high. So uh, we have good participation in, of webinars. Um, so thank uh, many thanks to everybody and uh, and uh, if you have any further information uh, questions or, or need further information you are welcome to to refer to the documents which were shared and links which you have and also this webinar was recorded and you it will be posted at the NACA uh, YouTube channel so you you are welcome to upload it and review it as, as many times as you need so thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you.